Hello again. So today I want to show you why you shouldn't take me or any other supposed expert too seriously. And I'm going to do that by entirely contradicting myself. And hopefully by doing so, I'm going to show you how when it comes to best practice, context is everything. But before I do that, can I be really honest with you? You're not supposed to be this level of honest because you're supposed to give everybody the impression you're high, you know, in high demand. But in truth, at the moment, with the current state of the world, I'm a bit light on work. So if you need some consultancy or some coaching, maybe some training or help improving your conversion rate on your website, then feel free to drop me an email to paul at boagworks.com. I'll even throw in a 10% discount if you book in October. As my mother used to say, honesty is the best policy. Anyway, back to why you shouldn't listen to me. Not too long ago, I shared with you my preferred approach for developing digital services, an approach that normally begins with a discovery project and crucially includes user research. And I've written before about the minimum I think you should be doing in terms of user research. However, if I'm being honest, again, it's a recurring theme today, I often ignore my own advice. You see, blindly following best practice that you may have heard online or at conference can often be wasteful and less effective in delivering results. So let me give you a real example, hopefully one that explains why you should always favor common sense and your own judgment over what you see online or hear at conferences or read in books. See, I've been working with a company for some time now, helping them to improve their conversion rate on their website. And because of a recent change in their circumstances, we ultimately concluded that the site needs to be redesigned and rebuilt. Now, if I'm honest with you, this isn't uh, an approach that I'm a huge fan of. I think that it's often really wasteful to just throw out a website and start again. But in this particular circumstances, I think it's the most cost effective approach. Now, typically in this kind of scenario, I would start with the discovery phase in order to better understand the users, better understand the competitive uh, environment and the landscape and, you know, as a chance to speak to stakeholders and understand their needs. However, in this particular case, I've decided against that, jumping straight into prototyping against all the advice I normally give. I didn't even do any kind of card sorting or top task analysis to decide on what the information architecture would be. Now, my reasoning for this was that I knew the client very well. I knew their audience very well and the needs of both the client and the audience, at least enough to have an initial stab at the website. Of course, as a result, I'm making a lot of assumptions and I may well be wrong about those assumptions. But what I intend to do is conduct those user interviews, so stakeholder interviews and carry out my user research retrospectively rather than up front. You see, if I've begun the project by interviewing my stakeholders and users, if I'm honest with you, I wouldn't really know what to ask them. So I would have done that because that's what you're supposed to do. I would have been going through the motions rather than because I had burning questions I needed to understand before I could start work. However, actually, by doing the prototyping straight out of the gate, that has thrown up various questions in my mind that I wouldn't have thought of if I'd gone straight into the discovery phase. And they're questions that I can now address through my user research and stakeholder interviews. Even more than that, showing the prototype to users and stakeholders is guaranteed to generate even more questions and identify wrong assumptions on my part that I can then address. In this case, it just made more sense to carry out the user research at the point when I had specific issues I needed to resolve. I guess what I'm driving at is that all too often we do these exercises because that's what we're supposed to do, not because we have a clear idea of what we want to learn by doing them. Everything from customer journey mapping to user surveying ultimately are just tools, tools that are there to help us answer questions and find out the information we feel we need. If we don't know 
what we need to know. If we don't know the questions we need to ask, then we shouldn't be using them. Use these techniques when it's sensible, not just because somebody has told you to in some article, video or podcast.